Hi everybody! I've got a 60 minute session that I'm doing for a client. We're going to be exploring a few different things. I'm going to read the goals here and get started. Okay. Alright, I'm feeling called now to dive deeper. I'm inclined to let spirit guide the topic. However, one, I need to release old energy patterns that no longer serve me and clear out stuff or gunk lodged in my energy field. And two, explore relationships. What's the purpose and lessons behind them? I.e., my SO, my family tribe, those who have passed like my dad and stepdad, plus my painting, which your painting is cool. I'm gonna show you guys. You see that? It's pretty. It's like an underwater world. It's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. But I can also, um, but can also include power in society. Lots to dive into there. I feel that it's through my relationships that I develop my sense of reality. Mm. I'm also highly empathetic in a kind of clairsentient way. I want to develop this skill since I have difficulty discerning whether it's me I'm feeling or whatever or whoever I'm interacting with. What does spirit have to say about this skill and how I can use it to help others? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing some photos with me too. And thank you for being open to sharing your session with the public. I'm just uh, absorbing all of this in. All right, clearing out the gunk, exploring relationships, exploring your empathic senses, psychic, clairsentient senses, and then wherever spirit wants to take us. These are really good goals. All right, I'm ready. <sighs> I'm relax here. Get tuned in. Okay. It's um, an artistic image, is the first image I see, and it's of a woman's um, naked body, and it's tastefully done. Um, you can see her from, it's sort of like being small looking up, so you can see it's kind of um, lots of blue colors in it, and it's not like um, photo perfect. Um, it, there's a, how do you want to put that? Um, there's an artistic um, element. It's not um, based on reality, but yet it is. So it has that kind of altered um, expression of itself. Um, but you can tell what this is we're looking at. And there's lots of brush strokes, lots and lots and lots and lots of brush strokes. And you can e almost see each and every one. Lots of different blue colors. And there's a lot of shading down at the bottom where her. Um, you know, feminine area is, and then it get, becomes brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter as you look up um, to see her chest and her face. And, and there's something um, liberating in a way. This, this um, art is the first thing that I'm seeing here. But there's a hidden sides to it, right? Because there's still the shadow of her sexuality. But there's a sort of liberating liberation of her... Um, of other parts of her sexuality, you could say, and just of her as a woman, because they're really bright and in the light. It's also important that we look at this image um, and just appreciate it for the for its artistic value. So it is, it's a nude painting, um, but it, it's saying so much more than that. So a kid might look at this and be like, oh, it's a naked woman. You know, but so with an adult mind, we look at it and we explore what it means to us, the what, way that it was painted like this, the shading, the colors. Um, why does it get brighter at the top than um, down towards the bottom? So you kind of um, are exploring what it means to you. 
Now, as I continue to look through her, I see um, what is the hourglass shape, but it's starting to turn into a lighthouse. And it's a really dark and stormy place. And there's really big crashing black waves because it's just simply so dark. You can't see the stars because they're hidden by all these clouds and the rain is just coming down. I mean, it's pouring. It's, it's a really serious storm. But the lighthouse is still thriving. It's still um, functioning. It's getting the light out there so that that light can guide um, sea bearers home, right? Travelers of the ocean home safely. It's also kind of a relief to see in such a dark time, the lighthouse that means you're this close, you're close to home. This lighthouse is very strong. So we see this image of the woman, right? And the light that shines from her um, is brightest at the face, okay? Um, and then we see through her into this scene of the lighthouse. Um, and this light will never, it won't stop shining and it continues to pierce through the darkness as this one light that's helping to guide people home. It's what it's like. It's very, um, there's depth to the way that this message makes me feel. Your heart resonates with it. Your third eye resonates with it. I still feel we're, um, at the surface of how deep that we can actually go here. And this already f has depth, energetic depth to it. So I'm still looking at the storm and it's a very long time. It seems like it's been storming for a very long time. And the lighthouse remains um, strong in its foundation, strong in its purpose, and continues to shine the light. And slowly but surely, it starts to, um, like I hear birds, and I start to see the raindrops subside, and the gloomy clouds are separating, and the sunlight is now coming out. Totally new scene, totally new meaning for a lighthouse. When the sun is so bright, the lighthouse's purpose is complete, right? It doesn't need to um, participate in being the light because the light is shining now. During the day, the sun is bright. So the lighthouse rests, but it still stays firm. It still stays strong in itself. All right, now this is where it's gonna get a little complicated because these images are easier to look at than some things that are beneath the surface of these images. And your energy field is um, its resonating with them, but there's a feeling of it's too perfect, it's too easy. And I know I'm sort of like digging beneath the ground to see what's here. There's kind of the sound of creepy crawly, massive insects. Like massive, like the size of a bus. <laughs> like big insects. And so we're kind of looking at this healthy side with the lighthouse, now the sunlight shining, and it feels so like everything is, is in the balance. Now towards the back side of the lighthouse, there's these giant, massive <laughs> insects. Uh, one's a scorpion, um, not a scorpion, um, not a, is it a centipede? Yeah, it's a centipede. It's got long hairy legs and it's like a worm, you know? <laughs> and then there's a, like a kind of a, a beetle, okay? got a big black shell to it but they're they're a bit gross there's something gross about them and I it's like in the shape of a are these like stink bugs it's like in the shape of a stink bug I keep thinking that must be a stink bug it's giving me the stinky feelings okay <laughs> And there's a clear separation between um, what is balanced and bright and what is um, some 
the ugly is coming out, okay? It still looks quite pretty because um, these monstrous bugs are coming out um, of the ground, but there's still something um, pretty about the nature scene. It's not like they're destroying it, but they are coming up and out of the ground, which is uprooting things, okay? And it seems as though these insects cannot come into this perfectly balanced space. So we've got two sides. I'm going to place this image over top the woman, all right, in the painting. And I'm li I'm literally like it's like a pit, a book. It has the this page and then you go to the next, you know, over there. So we have literally a pic two pictures here. And then a line in the center. And I'm I'm kind of sat like kind of turning them to see how they fit in this painting. And this bright aspect um, is like reminds me of the lighthouse and everything, the brightest parts of this pre pre presentation of the Divine Feminine. But then the, this ugly hidden part um, is down here at the bottom where, where the hips are. It's all shadowed out so you can't, you can see but you also can't quite see. There feels like an imbalance there. interesting because I feel like it's okay to be um, a childlike interpreter because there's really no right or wrong answers ever and so in this way I'm exploring how I can make I can help her feel brighter everywhere so she can be bright in all parts of herself This is really moving energy. It's particularly encouraging the energy to start to drop, okay? And start to pull down through like the torso, through the hips, through the legs, through the feet. So it's starting to move the energy down. I'm encouraging you to really express because I still feel there's a bit of you holding back. Um, but your deeper self knows what it's having a hard time looking at. And so I had to slowly but surely work our way into it so we can see it. It's able to show me a little bit. It's able to give me some pointers. But it's not really like opening itself up fully as deeply as it could, you know? I'm like waiting still in suspense for the next thing. Because this could be one powerful sacral chakra healing, which is going to totally revamp the way all your chakras are working together. <sighs> healing sacral chakra is also a great way to um, bring in more abundance um, more reasons to enjoy life. So when your sacral chakra is really bright, um, it attracts bright people, bright opportunities, um, more reasons to celebrate life, okay? And then let life celebrate you too. Boy, oh boy, it's really intense. I like him. Um, This intensity is welling up right now in my heart, back of my neck, um, lower, like lower back of my head. It's really getting really energetically intense. So the next thing, you're showing me a, a train ride. It's like kind of a, a ride you might find at amusement park. Um, and it's slowly, I can hear it on the tracks, and we're going into a black, pitch black mountain, okay? You're really good at speaking to me through images, 
you're safe to show me the pictures, but you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Which is okay, because I can do the talking and then you can tell me if that's about right or um, not quite right. So we'll work together by looking at the pictures. Alright, I'm starting to feel a bit emotional in my, my gut, okay? <sighs> Exhausting in the heart. Very tired now. I tell you it's safe. But your guides say we aren't going to bring the lighthouse in here. You gotta be the light for yourself in the dark places of your own soul journey. But as you see, you don't have to do it alone, right? It's sometimes very hard to be the light for yourself to be that strong all the time is hard. <sighs> to be the lighthouse all the time is hard for a human being. Eventually, even the structure of a lighthouse will break down, right? It needs to be worked on just like a human being. <sighs> so I'm giving you permission to, um, to not be so solid. <laughs> To not be so strong all the time. This is moving things in your solar plexus, okay? So in, I hear your mind, your wheels turning, and the idea is, okay, if I have to be the light for myself, then I won't be a light at all. Then I can hide in the dark. So they can't see me, I can't see them. There's nothing to look at here. <laughs> That's kind of um, what your inner decision making is. This part of you, okay? That's struggling with this. It's very hard to get this uh, train ride moving. I mean, it's like we enter into the cave and we're starting to kind of go down and then around a curve, um, but it keeps like getting jammed up, like like putting the train back here and then we just start this again. No, 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 no. It just keeps like uh, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It just doesn't want to continue to go further. So I'm just, as you can see, this party is vulnerable about whatever this is about. And who knows, this, this could be brighter than we know or darker than we know. Because sometimes parts of us are afraid of the light and afraid of the dark. So I still don't know what's down here and what's holding you back. Um, but we're just going to keep working through it, okay? You're a child. And you're relying on me to be kind of like an adult to protect you. So I disappear. And I take off the brake. And now you're moving. And I become like a spirit guide voice in your head. And I say I need you to trust that everything is going to be okay and you're being guided and everything about this journey is being guided perfectly no matter what scary gross stuff there is you needed to see that and the beautiful stuff you got to see that too right but to really enjoy the beautiful stuff we got to come to peace with the gross ugly scary stuff right you're safe on this train and nobody can hurt you in the dark. And if you're afraid to be the light for yourself, just give yourself some time. Be patient with yourself. This uh, train, it's, it's like uh, the track is starting to turn into a goop and you're sinking. It's not moving anymore. You're just sinking deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into a pit. 
a black pit. And I whisper into your mind and tell you that you are safe here. You are in the right place at the right time. Say, I don't want to see anything scary. I say, if you can remember that everything scary is simply a reflection of yourself, it will help. It's a reflection of yourself that simply needs support so that it can find its way back to its own inner angel. And you say, why am I down here? And this guide voice says, follow your heart and you will find out. And it's, it's encouraging this childlike part of you to continue to walk forward in the dark. You're very afraid to use your own light because you don't want to be seen. You want to go unnoticed. The thing is, you're more powerful being bright. <laughs> because you got to own your own light and they're they're wanting us to continue there's more to this message they want to talk more about this whole concept it's sort of like we see the lighthouse supporting the human beings that need to find their way home um, so they can they can travel safely um, but what about the human being that has to stand firm in dark places? Um, now anything can be attracted to that light, right? And so how does the human being cope with that? This is really hardcore on your third eye, starting to um, get your throat moving, heart, solar plexus back of your head there's um and there's no like hello you know lights blinking in the sacral right now um these are the chakras that are just really being um louder at this part of the journey So she's been traveling for a very long time in the dark and nothing has actually happened. She's trying to find her way out. At first she was afraid of what could be down here, but now her fear is that she'll never get out of here. And she's talking about how interesting it is that you could have one fear then not realize that the worst fear of them all is to be trapped. It's a very, very long time and there's extraordinary purpose for why this is happening. If I were to explain time here, it's like watching this little girl walking um, forward in complete darkness. She um, slowly manifests what is like a lantern of light um, because she stops being afraid. But she doesn't use the light inside herself, she just creates light and then just keeps moving forward but nothing happens. And she's like been walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. And we're talking like years and years and years and years and years. It's an energy space. So it's an in, in, infinite time. It could be like 300 years. It could be a thousand years. But this is a long time. This feels like a long time. No need for food. Don't need to sleep. Your soul resonates with this. Your soul recognizes this time and darkness. All right, we're getting to the next phase of this process. 
I feel like, again, you're still holding back or resisting what you really saw kind of thing. Um, what, what really happened, we're slowly working our way into it. But as we work our way into it, your third eye, your heart, your solar plexus here are really like amplified. Like it's constantly shifting. Energies are constantly shifting. So this is where we're at here. That I feel like we're getting close to the next thing, okay? Inside of yourself, you have an inspiration. And it's time. It's time that shows you not to be afraid because nothing ever happens. And it's time that shows you that being afraid of being trapped here forever, after a very, very long time, starts to subside as well. So there's literally an adjustment to the experience to the point that there's nothing to be afraid of anymore because you already know what to expect. Now that you're used to it and you're not afraid anymore, you manifest, um, an opportunity, something to happen. You manifest it. And now suddenly you reach a door. There's a big goblin like toad man that, that opens it. And he grumbles, he's like, <laughs> and that's how he says, what do you want? <laughs> that's literally how he says it, just like that. It's like a gurgly blurgly, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> so he's like, it's huge. I mean, you're like, you're like two inches tall in, in comparison to like this giant monstrous, like 50 foot tall building toad man. I mean, that's like the size comparison. But it's all energy. He senses you. He, you can be as tiny as a little atom and he senses you. He doesn't need to see you to know you're here. So he just likes to be the size. He likes to be like this. You actually say to him that I, I'm seeking you for help, seeking you for guidance, seeking you. And it's not as if you're saying it was you. I was seeking it inside myself and then you appeared. This door and then you appeared. He's asking what you're doing down here in the dark. because he's kind of eyeing you like he, uh, and it has to do with the concept of trust <sighs> but he can tell that you you're you're so far through this thing that you don't even care <laughs> if you can trust him or not you just need something other than this He's kind of a neutral energy, so he's not, um, he's good and he's bad, he's, but he's kind of neutral, like, but he's the right energy for you, for sure, at this part of your journey. I mean, he's not, he's got the, some dark sides of himself, he has light sides of himself, and they kind of mix together to create, like, a muddy color, but it feels neutral. It feels like you're here to learn and grow. And he's a good fit for your energy. And you're a good fit for his energy. Because it's not just you learning and growing, it's also him. It's a reciprocal. So he receives and you receive. Man, what is up with this? It's like for a time that is forever. And the only way that you could really com comprehend the time is based on how how long it takes for you to stop being afraid, how long, you know, afraid of somebody jumping out of the dark, how long does it take for you to finally um, stop being afraid of never coming out of this, you know, how long is it going to take for you to um, explore and experience this time with this giant toad man um, to where you feel like you've come full circle or ready for the next thing. It's a very long time that you spend with this toad man. Like, this is a, this is in your energy field. Your soul no, understands this story. And he's kind of a magical um, mixes, potions, and things. There's a, always a new scent or smell because he's using all different types of, 
like herbs. I mean, it's like walking into a whole nother dimension. It's still dark and dim, but he's always got something in this, uh, like a kettle, like a witch would have, and it's a big round pot. And he's reading out of uh, books and mixing things, like cookbooks for witches and wizards or something. But he's not very well developed. He doesn't really... I mean, he's still a beginner in all of this himself. Because he's not trusting in his own inner guidance. He needs somebody to guide him. And as he's guided by others, um, and he learns it for himself, now he can start guiding himself. But he isn't guiding himself. So you're watching him learning from a book. Um, and doing all of these things. So in a way, you're both in, in similar levels of each other because you don't trust in your own inner guidance as this little girl. Um, you manifested this being to help you. He isn't trusting in his own inner guidance either. He needs books and somebody else's knowledge to teach him. Um, so you're watching him and he's trying to learn um, things, okay? About these potions and such. And your guides are constantly beaming in information um, to find it inside yourself. Find it inside yourself. Find it inside yourself. You don't need the, the books and the instructions. You know already inside yourself. And, but you're still seeing yourself at um, a lower level than your true potential. Because what is in your way now? It's not necessarily fear. It's not believing in yourself. It's not giving yourself a chance. But that's perfectly fine. That is, that is all the right balance. Because that is what you need right now. In this now, okay? You spend such a long time, energetic time, just sitting on a giant table watching him. Um... That's what this energy space is like, okay? And it's almost like he's always doing this. For hundreds and hundreds of years, he just sit standing at a black kettle and then new information comes into his book and he tries this and he tries that and he tries this. It's just like some weird um, other dimensional space of just this toad man's house and his, his learning how to become some kind of like magician type. It's a mage or something, some kind of... Um, warlock. But you actually start to appreciate, you enjoy the company. And you manifest yourself a little bed to sleep in, and you're, you start to feel safe here, and you like him being around, and you like being around him. Because he doesn't threaten you, he doesn't do anything. He's always doing the same thing. So again, you're adjusting Consistency helps you feel safe, helps you to know how to cope with things. It gives you the time to adjust and um, get used to an experience. This is interesting. So once you manifest this bed, and you uh, fall asleep in it. This is when your soul is doing the next learning. Um, it actually leaves this, it's almost like, they're not necessarily saying leaving this, it does leave this dimension, but it does go to another dimension. You could be in two dimensions simultaneously, you could be in bajillion dimensions simultaneously. And in the end, you're in all dimensions as it is, so. But that's what this is like. I see you fall asleep and then I see you um, traveling. But I still feel you're in the bed in this toad's house. That's okay, now, okay. Multiple things are happening at once. One is, I told you that Toad, he's kind of muddy. He's good, you know, he's not good also. And you felt peaceful and safe there, so you stayed there. And you're not, you're not inspiring yourself to guide yourself. You're not finding it inside yourself. Now there's a lesson to be learned. Because this toad has just been standing there learning and learning and learning all this stuff. Now he's starting to explore himself. 
and he's finding you to be an interesting opportunity. And you're sleeping, astral traveling somewhere else. So while that is all happening, they aren't showing me necessarily. It seems quite positive, though. Whoever you go is feels like bright and happy and cheerful. Feels like a really great dream. <laughs> all the while, he's thinking of what he's going to do, and you start to look like a little sausage. Like something, maybe he can use you in one of his spells. So he's starting to get some muddier ideas. And in the end, you manifested this. Because you were always afraid that something like this would happen. And then it ended up happening. Because it's the one thing that you need to face. And it's, it's also happening because it brings you back to... You need to trust in what you're capable of. You need to own your own light. You need to be guiding the toad here. You need to be guiding all of the things that are hiding in the dark. You need to be... You need to turn this inside out. You have this observer self that's watching what happens with the toad who was your friend. Turned out he had a change of heart, okay? Because you were an opportunity for him to learn and grow. And he wanted to learn and grow and the book wasn't enough for him. The spells and everything wasn't enough, and now he needs to rely on himself to learn and grow, and he's working with his own inner ideas. And one of the ideas is you. And it doesn't matter what it means to you, because all that it matters is what it means to him. And that's his level of understanding. You walked yourself into this experience, and you told him that you're wanting somebody to guide you. He's guiding you into your own inner learning, even if it's an ugly one. Yeah, he's just, it's, you can get out of this, this fast. All you have to do is realize your own inner power. Or you can succumb to whatever this toad's got in mind. You see how your guides are giving you an opportunity to discover your power through this challenge, this disturbing challenge. You thought everything was safe. <laughs> And everything has always been safe. And nobody has ever been anywhere to hurt you. It's only you not coming into your own that is creating these opportunities of challenge. Then the challenge is telling you to find your true power. Be guided by your own light. Man, this message is so powerful. Okay, something is happening here. So the toad is, the toad has sort of like uh, made it so you can't say anything. There's some sort of energy around your mouth. And you're kind of like ro energetically roped up. So you can't move, you can't go anywhere. Because toad's afraid that you're going to leave. And then what's toad going to do? Now his ambitions are all down the drain. He needs you. And the reason why is because he's... It's almost like... He wants to keep doing the same thing, but he wants to grow. He wants to grow from it. Continue to try different... Um, ingredients in the pot and see what it creates you as one of the ingredients but he isn't realizing what is beyond this he isn't going further so it, his lesson about love is that once he takes you and puts you in the pot so to speak he's going to be alone again and he's going to have to find it inside of himself because it wasn't the book and it wasn't the ingredients and it wasn't the pot either so he hadn't figured it out yet. And now you're still not figuring it out yet, right? So interesting. He's going to be at a loss if he follows through with his inner ideas. You will also have this opportunity to change everything. Will you take it or will you not? And your guides are watching because they can't be you. All they can do is guide you. And you can choose to hear it 
receive it or be afraid. And then being afraid then kind of gets in the way here of what you can embrace, you know? <laughs> Something moves inside your heart and you look at the toad. The toad's shifting from male to female. And you show the toad that the toad felt like a family member to you. Somebody who loved you and was keeping an eye on you and looking after you. And now you're becoming selfish. Now you're only looking after yourself. And all I matter for is for this moment for you to learn something new through destroying me. But you say it more like, please don't hurt me. He's struggling with the dark and the light sides of himself. And he keeps going between the male and female um, personas. And he's slowly, he's not hopping by any means, he's walking towards you. And he looks dark in one eye and dark in the other, but it's like it, it kind of glimmers with light at times and he's fighting an in internal battle. And you start talking to him about love and family. And you talk to him about the very long walk. How hard it was to enter into the dark cave and how you shut your light off because you were afraid. And the very long walk that you had to do being afraid you would never get out. And then wanting a guide, wanting somebody, the, just a very long time being afraid and no longer afraid, like I need something new, and then you appear. And I love you. I am thankful for you that you could let me come in. The toad's still deciding. And I ask you, what if you're waiting for the toad to make a decision when the toad is waiting for you to say our time is complete you control this situation you control what is going to happen next no matter what that thing is our time is complete and he throws you in the pot or our time is complete and you disappear and transition to another dimension we don't know, but you control this whole situation. Not the toad, you. Just as you created the doorway to the toad in the first place. You have so much power. Still resisting that power, but you speaking about the way this toad made you feel and the gratitude that you had and the peacefulness that you felt and that it felt like love to you it shows me that you've learned what you wanted to learn from this experience and for you to linger is only to create kind of a confusion between the relationship between you and toad because in the end this isn't necessarily what toad wants either you have to be the stronger person. She starts to sing a song. And she realizes this little you, realizes this whole time watching Toad create this stew. That she was creating her own stew inside of herself. Her own magic. And she had learned it when she fell asleep and went to the other dimensions and had a really beautiful dream. And it's like the first light, the, the brighter light, the brightest lights she's seen since she came into the dark um, were provided to her. 
in that dream. And this moment speaking to Toad and speaking this message and opportunity to Toad, um, you're just kind of like singing a song and you start to glow from the inside and you realize you are get, gaining so much awareness, more than you thought you were, more than you perceived. This is still, this is still a struggle. This journey here is give is liberating you. It's liberating your energy field, your deeper consciousness, all that you are to realize the power is in your hands and what real power feels like. It's in everyday lessons. It's in every moment. It's, it's time. It's the next time that, you know, it's time that changes the scenery, that changes the way that we feel. It's not time as we know it with minutes and, and hours and days. It's, it's time as in lessons. So lessons are real time. And it's this image of the lighthouse that is a misconception because it's this idea of perfection and strength that isn't really tuned into what true lessons are all about. This is really reaching you. I mean, you're really moving, energetically moving here. Back of the mind, um, it's even a bit hard to breathe. It's in the throat, the heart, like all your chakras are really responding to this. But yet you aren't just owning it yet, okay? You're so close. I, uh, all right. So there's a darker mind here. The darker mind tells you both something. But Toad would need to hear it from you. Darker mind tells you that this family relationship has value, but you're not speaking the same language. So when you tell Toad your feelings and you glow really bright, it's not changing anything for Toad. And in the end, Toad is your family member. Maybe you need to start telling, working with Toad on some new um, potions that you both come up with together. But really, this voice is just encouraging you to stop shining bright and encouraging you to come down to Toad's level and become muddy. But it's actually a really good idea. <laughs> it seems to make sense. And you say, I don't know what exists beyond Toad. And I don't want to walk forever in the dark and in the loneliness. At least if Toad and I work together, we'll have each other. Because I don't know what's beyond this. And without knowing, I, I can't, I can't uh, go on alone. Because all I know is that after Toad, I go back to the dark, long, empty walk. Forever. And the dark voice nods and says, yes. But see, you don't know, you don't know. You can't even fathom yourself yet. And how powerful you are. You haven't figured out how to use that power, how to channel it. Another voice comes in. This voice is um, dark, but it's a hard teacher, but it will get you where you want to go, but it's going to be the hard way. It's a teacher that's made up of very sharp thorns, and the teacher says, without Toad, you need to be strong. Toad isn't here for you anymore. You need to accept that and acknowledge that that is the truth. You've glowed for Toad, you sang to Toad, you gave Toad an opportunity to shift, to be a real reflection of love, and Toad is not doing that. For you to stay here and to work with Toad is you just doing what doesn't suit you, which isn't your soul's calling. You need to walk out the door and start the long, dark road. And you need to find yourself. 
even if it takes a million years in the dark and in the loneliness. You see this voice is correct, but it's also creating an illusion that isn't true either. Is you don't have to walk out the door and take the long lonely road if you don't want to. But that one makes more sense to you. And I say, well, where's the voice of light here? Because you know, these voices are kind of have a little bit of mischievousness to them. I mean, there's truth here. There's opportunity for growth. Um, but it's not all true. <laughs> And I see like a Mother Mary persona, like a beautiful Divine Feminine come. It's, this is complica a complicated message. That the journey can stop at any time. But it's like ascending, like stopping here with Toad, for instance. And just saying, you know, I'm at peace with everything. And ascending above all of this, something feels... Um, and she's saying that's why these harder voices are heard and not the bright voice because the soul still wants to grow and learn. So when the soul no longer wants to grow and learn, it will find the voice of light to bring it home. Otherwise she can't hear this divine feminine speaking. Because deep down inside she's not done with her journey yet. She actually wants to keep discovering new things. And they show me time and the, the process of what is a beginning, okay? And how that beginning transitions, 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 like transitions millions and millions and millions and millions of times. But it still starts, it, it, it's like, here's that beginning of fear going into the dark. But conquering, 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 understanding, 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 understanding the ca capacity of the soul the capacity and then bringing the tools in the tools in the tools in the tools in fine-tuning 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 um and you see that there's been literally no time other than discoveries these this next discovery this next discovery this next discovery and i see this little girl become like um like, it's almost like she has armor, she has full plate armor, she's got this, she's got that, she's got this other thing. She's like the best character in the video game, you know? She's got all this stuff. But then it comes to this question, when will it be enough, man? She carries so much. She carries so many memories, which are also burdens in a way. Um, but yet she knows her power in a way she never did before. Is she... Is she happy with what she's discovered yet? Is she ready to move on? Um, or is she still looking for the next thing to challenge her? She says something about becoming proud of herself. And she has to do the next hardest thing. And that's to take off all the protection and to leave all this stuff behind. Because she already had everything that she needed when she went into the dark. She had herself. She just wasn't aware what all of that meant. And it feels uncomfortable to take it all off, to set it all aside, to be completely and utterly exposed. And now to just simply start shining her light without anything else shining her light. And she knows the visitors she's going to run into. She knows the types of conversations that'll be had. And some of them will be really beautiful and turn ugly. Some of them will stay beautiful. Some of them will just simply be a long, hard, lonely, scary road. <laughs> 
But she's starting to figure this out to the point that she can just believe in herself now. She can just work with her own light. She's just getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And I start to hear that divine feminine voice is the same voice that is inside of herself. It was like her higher self speaking. And I start to see this whole world just disappear. And she doesn't need anything else. Because she's found herself in all of this. She found herself. They're showing me something precious about the painting that of the woman to not change a single thing because everything about her is beautiful and bright is a reflection of perfection in itself it's everything is in the balance no matter how you look at it everything is in the balance I will say this is done. I mean, your third eye is still like the energy turning here is like really intense, <laughs> really, really intense. So I'm just going to continue to let this circulate. Okay. So what we ended up finding was a soul journey, a timeline, a beginning and an end, but really just the unity between a beginning and an end that brings you back to the whole point of it all, which was simply to find yourself and the light that you are free now to express without resistance and the strength of just understanding what this process is all about. And it's sort of like an igniting of this divine feminine energy or higher self energy we don't even have to call it just feminine but there's something about the feminine energy here the woman in the painting the the hourglass shaped lighthouse um the little girl right the higher self the divine feminine higher self you feel like super like all the black goop was just wrung out of the rag and you feel like you gained a level of sight like the windshield is washed clean and it you didn't even realize it wasn't that clean like <laughs> man that looks good i can see i can see really well <laughs> i thought i could see before but boy I'm, i can really see <laughs> it's like this It's actually, I'm just looking at the, the, the lighthouse and the perfection and then the sort of the gross big bugs. I just want to give it to this girl who's just sort of ascended all of this. See what her thoughts are on it. She says, it's part of my memories of what, it's like what helped me to discover myself. It's just part of my journey, part of my memories of what had helped me find myself. Again, every single detail is what I need in order to find myself at every moment. Mm. You just like a bright star in the sky, super bright star in the sky. I'm going to start stepping back here from your energy field and just see if there's anything else, okay? Because, man, I went pretty deep in there. That was a really cool, just, it's like a, the, your soul story in a way.
That's literally all that I am called to share. And you're gonna feel that. <sighs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's really cool. I'm a bit, I'm still like kind of collect, like coming back to my own mind here. <laughs> But that was, that was really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, for any of you interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you all and have a beautiful day.